When we look at movie battles, there are very few that come close to the Battle of Helm's Deep in terms of epicness. As we get to watch the men of Rohan put up an incredible struggle against the forces of Isengard. And yet, even though this battle looked amazing in the movies, some fans weren't too happy with the inclusion of the elves. For these elven reinforcements never came to Helm's Deep in the books, and the men of Rohan had to actually stand alone against the army of Isengard. Hey guys, it's Carl here. And in today's episode, we'll be breaking down this iconic scene as we discuss its pros and cons. Now before we start, I'd like to clarify that this is obviously my own take on it, and it's totally cool if you guys have a different opinion, so there's no need for any pitchforks. So when we look at the Battle of Helm's Deep in the movies, the men of Rohan are clearly in a dire situation, for their garrison was barely 300 men strong and many of their so-called warriors were in fact farmers or stable boys, with very little experience in war, if any. There were also many old men and young boys in this garrison, and through this we can see how desperate Rohan was to muster an army and defend this fortress. It would almost seem impossible that these 300 conscripts could somehow fight off and overcome 10,000 Urukai, not even ordinary orcs, and as the audience we can surely feel the dread of these terrible odds. Now in the books, the men of Rohan still had to face off an army which was around 10,000 strong, though their own garrison was a lot more professional, better trained and more numerous. In fact, they had around a thousand professional soldiers garrisoned in Helm's Deep, and when Theoden arrived from Edoras, he brought around a thousand cavalrymen with him. And so we can see that there is a massive difference between 2,000 professional soldiers that are armed and ready for war, compared to the 300 conscripts that we see in the movies which, as a choice, makes sense, since the movies want us to feel that desperation, and they want us to appreciate the dire threat that seemed to await the armies of Rohan. In what is probably their lowest point, in terms of hope, we hear an interesting horn call from outside Helm's Deep, and we get to see the epic arrival of the elven reinforcements. These elven warriors are shown to be a sharp contrast from the garrison of Rohan, for they were intimidating elite units, agile, precise and fierce, and the scene helps to uplift our spirits, and it even gives us hope that with the help of the elves, Rohan might now stand a chance at withstanding the forces of Isengard. Now there's no doubt that the scene is epic and very emotionally thrilling, though it does create a dichotomy between the conscripts of Rohan and the elves in terms of appearance, experience and skill, and this is the main issue with the elves' arrival that it kind of takes away from the nobility and struggle of Rohan, how even though they were pushed to the brink of destruction on this dark night, they managed to persevere and survive through the bravery and sacrifice of their people, the bravery and sacrifice of the race of men. We don't really manage to appreciate this in the movies, for without the elven reinforcements, Helm's Deep would have surely been overrun by the time Gandalf arrived, and so these elves are almost the deciding factor in this victory, which was supposed to belong and be achieved by the valor of men. Now according to Peter Jackson, he didn't choose to simply include the elves to create an epic scene, but he also wanted to show how these other races of Middle-earth, such as the dwarfs and elves, were also fighting against the forces of Sauron in their own lands. This actually happens in the books, for Sauron had sent out an army of Easterlings and Orcs to attack Erebor, Mirkwood and Lothlorien, and since it would have been hard to show these battles in the movies without losing focus on the plot, Peter Jackson felt that he could include the elves' arrival to Helm's Deep as a way of showing how Sauron and Saruman were a threat to all the free people. Personally, I can appreciate this argument, though I feel that would never get the impression that the elven and dwarven lands were under any serious threat in the movies. And so we might end up questioning, why didn't the elves and dwarfs send any armies to help Gondor and Rohan? since after all, the dwarfs and elves had sent representatives to the Council of Elrond, and they knew of the dire threat of Mordor and Sauron. To be fair, anyone that read the books would know that this wasn't the case, though I can see some moviegoers getting a bit confused by it. Now there is something which always struck me as odd when I compared The Hobbit to The Lord of the Rings, that in The Hobbit you've got quite a few main characters, Thorin, Feely and Kili, that die in the final battle even though it was meant to be a children's book, while in The Lord of the Rings, Boromir was the only real casualty of the Fellowship, despite how dangerous their task was. Just to be clear, I'm not complaining about it, I'm actually quite glad they survived, 
Though I feel that, in a battle, it sometimes helps to raise the stakes and emphasize the feelings of death and danger, to get the audience immersed and engaged as they worry about the safety of the protagonist. This was actually done quite well in The Fellowship of the Ring, with Gandalf's fall and Boromir's death, and I feel that the elves help to bring that feeling of dread and worry to a lesser extent. When we see these immortal beings fall in battle, it subconsciously carries more weight to it, for an almost endless life was cut short, and we even get the death of a side character, their leader Haldir. This is obviously not as impactful as the death or danger of a more important character, though it still helps to connect the audience with the somber realism of battle. In the books, we only know of one character with a name that falls in this battle, Hama, the captain of the King's Guard, and his death is only mentioned in passing, though I suppose that they could have developed his character more in the movies to eventually showcase his death. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is that it's important to ground the audience and make them feel the risk and danger of battle, and the elven deaths have a really profound impact in this regard. There is one thing which I'm really glad they didn't use for the movies, which was actually an idea they had early on, for they were planning to have Arwen join the elves in the Battle of Helm's Deep. It's not that she couldn't be a warrior, it just felt they were really trying hard to force her in the plot and increase her importance and her impact on the story, when at this point, the story was meant to be focused on other characters. It would have been really weird to have Arwen and Aragorn reunited in Helm's Deep as I feel that it was best to leave this reunion and the life that he desired with her for after his quest to have maximum impact. For while he was on this quest, Aragorn was sacrificing a lot and giving it his all to one day marry and be with the love of his life. And so, keeping a certain distance between them helps to bring out the sacrifice and journey even more. She was also going to replace Haldir in the story, leading the elven force to Helm's Deep and so would have missed out on the death of a side character and the repercussions that this brought to the story. Just as a fun fact, in the early scripts, Arwen was actually going to have a much bigger role in the movie trilogy. For example, she was going to rescue Eotain and Freda from the Urukai, take part in the Battle of Helm's Deep and the Battle of Pelennor Fields, and she was even going to be mortally weakened by the Black Breath of the Witch King. It's almost like the writers weren't too sure what to do with her character, and I'm really glad they abandoned this idea, for as it stood, her character would have overlapped a lot with that of Eowyn, and Arwen doesn't need a sword in her hand to be important or to be strong. For those of you who are interested, you can actually find some footage of Arwen fighting and arriving in Helm's Deep, even though it was eventually cut from the final shot. Anyway guys, this wraps up today's video and I hope you enjoyed it. Did you like seeing the elves in Helm's Deep? Or do you think this idea should have been abandoned? And how do you feel about Arwen's early storyline in the movies? And do you think that it was best to change it? I'm quite new to these sort of videos, though I really enjoy making them so far. And so hopefully we'll have more of them on this channel. I'd also love any feedback or topic suggestions that you'd have for these video essays. So feel free to drop any of them in the comments below. Until next time friends, take care. And I hope you join us on our next journey into the wonderful world and lore of Middle-earth.